Hi, I'm Maria, a 2005 graduate of Harvard Business School who's been giving MBA admissions advice for over a decade. I've taken those years of experience and I've turned it into Applicant Lab, an online interactive tool that walks you through every step you need to assemble the strongest application possible. Now, my clients regularly tell me that the resume module is one of their favorite modules, and in this video we're going to walk you through some of the key bits of advice that are covered there. Now, when we're thinking about applying to business school, you might know that there are all of these different components that go into the application. But what a lot of people don't realize is that each of these components works together. And in fact, all of the different parts of the application have to flow together in harmony in order for the application to get accepted. For example, if your career vision is one in which you state that you want to be doing X and Y and Z in the world, but your resume does not show any evidence whatsoever that you have experience doing X, Y, or Z, the different gears in your application are going to be moving in opposite directions and the entire machinery of your application is going to come screeching to a grinding halt. Now, how important is the resume in terms of the admissions process? We actually know this because GMAC, the people who issue the GMAT, polled 100 admissions officers a couple years ago and found out that the resume is in fact 15% of the decision. It is, you will note, the single most important part of the written components of the application. That is the stuff that you submit before you even get invited to interview in most cases. For that reason, you really need to pay close attention to how your resume conveys your experiences. Now, in an ideal world, this is what admissions would look like. There would be an admissions officer. She has cleared her calendar for three hours. Imagine that it's a Monday morning. She has just come back from a relaxing weekend. It's the first thing she's got on her desk this morning. Look, her, her computer's not even on because she's just focused entirely on your application. In fact, she's even got her little magnifying glass here ready to go, ready to dig into every subtle nuance and the 4,000 details that you have provided for her. This is what we as applicants wish the admissions process looked like, and trust me, this is what admissions officers wish their lives looked like. However, working in admissions feels a little bit more like this. These Poor, hardworking people are completely overwhelmed. And so when you are submitting your resume or any part of your application, do not assume that it's going to be the first thing read at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. Instead, do this thought exercise. Ask yourself, what if it's 6.40 p.m. on a Friday? And your application is the last thing standing between this admissions officer and their weekend. Assume that they have got an amazing weekend planned. Their favorite movie is actually showing tonight. And they're going to go see it tonight at 7.30. <laughs> but before they leave, they think, well, maybe just one more file. Imagine that they are exhausted and they have read hundreds of files this week. And yours is the last one they're going to read. Now, imagine that this is you and it's 6.40 p.m. on a Friday, and you pull open an application, and you open up the PDF of the resume, and you see something that looks like this. How would you react? What would your reaction be? Would you say to yourself, ah, oh, hot diggity. I cannot wait to dig into this amazing jam-packed resume. Look, is that, is that six-point font? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, my favorite hobby is squinting, and I can't wait to squint while I try to read through all of this stuff. No. You wouldn't think that. Imagine instead that you open up the resume file and it looks something more like this. Ah, look at that white space. How much more inviting is this? Look at how the spaces between the bullets give your eye a place to rest. The way how the indentation works lets your eye know where to flow, where to start, and where it should go next. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, first of all, you might be saying to yourself, this is really fuzzy, I can't read it. I know that's on purpose. The, I'm not trying to show you specifics about wording here. What I'm trying to show you is that you need to be aware of that initial visceral impression, that visual impression. What's going to be that first punch in the gut that they're going to get when they see your file? Are they going to think, oh, oh no? Or are they going to think, huh, this is kind of inviting. Let me dig in. You want to have the resume that's more on the right. Now, you also might be asking yourself, but Maria, there's, you know, if I put all this room for this white space, how am I going to have room for everything that I need, you know, everything I've ever done in my life? You know, I can't even fit it on this one page alone, much less this much more reduced page. And my answer to that is you need to be very selective on your resume. You need to 
pick with surgical precision exactly which experiences you talk about and precisely how you talk about them, which aspects of that experience you focus on. If you try to convey everything you've ever done and every facet of every project you've ever worked on, you're going to end up with this kind of unappealing word soup on the left, and that is not what you want. Now, frequently when I talk to people about resumes, they'll say something like, Puh, Maria, this is actually, it's great news that the resume is so important because my resume, frankly, is awesome. My resume is amazing. And I know this because my resume got me my job. Here's the problem, though. You cannot use the same resume for your MBA application that you lose, used for your last job search. Eh, do not do it. And why is this? Well, let's think about this for a split second. First of all, let's assume this is you today. Mm, very nice. You look good. I like that outfit on you. Um, and you have a job that you do today, and it's probably a somewhat junior-ish job. After all, if you weren't junior, you wouldn't be applying to business school to begin with, right? So when a recruiter looks at your resume, they are trying to get a sense of who you're going to be over the next kind of you know one to two years. And why is this? Well, because most people stay in a job for only two years. So if if I know that you're gonna you know leave after about two and a half years, frankly, the only thing I care about as a recruiter is can you do the job that I have open tomorrow? Can you start tomorrow and do the job I need you to do tomorrow? And can you maybe grow into a slightly higher level version of that same job you have today? Now, this is not at all the same time horizon with which an admissions officer is looking at your application. They are not trying to get a sense of who you're going to be in the next one to two years. They are trying to get a sense of who you are going to be in the next 20 years. And their hope is that no matter what it is you're doing or what industry you're working in, that you are in some way leading that industry, that you are having a very positive impact on that industry. And frankly, spoiler alert, the skills that make you successful at your job today, these kinds of juniorish things that you do, do not really have anything at all to do with success in the long term. In the long term, your functional expertise is not nearly as important as business leadership, mostly through EQ, showing that you have a good understanding of others. How do you motivate others? How do you inspire others? How do you persuade and negotiate with others effectively? These skills in the long term help determine who reaches those you know, C-suite level type jobs, much more so than your ability to do the job you do today. So what does that mean on a very pragmatic level? On a pragmatic level, focus that precious, precious resume space on your leadership stories, on your greatest hits, especially anything at all that involves working with, persuading, motivating, or convincing other people. Do not waste my time with the summary of qualifications section. And please, 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 no skills section. Why are you going to spend time and their mental cognitive energy? Why are you going to waste that precious cognitive energy convincing them that you have skills that are going to be obsolete in 20 years? Nothing, please, nothing about the programming languages that you can code in or that you're adept with Microsoft Office or Google AdWords or what have you. These are things that hopefully 20 years from now, if your career goes well, frankly, you're going to have people doing this stuff for you. Right? So don't waste that time convincing me that you're good at it. And please, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, no jargon ever. Most people who work in admissions come from human resources and recruiting type backgrounds. I'd like to jokingly say that they don't know their PHP from their SQL. Uh, and even if they did, it doesn't matter because this isn't the stuff that matters to them. It is business school after all, not engineering graduate school. Also, don't waste any bullet points on your resume on secretarial or janitorial aspects of your job. And by that, I mean anything that involves cleaning other people's work up, right? If you have to clean stuff up, don't waste time on it, right? Because you're just going to dilute the overall story. And here's an example from my career when I was applying to HBS. So prior to business school, I worked on the pre-launch plans for a company that today is called Tata Sky. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Sky Television, it's kind of like Direct TV, but for India. So I had I worked on this project. It was a super exciting project, super high profile. You know, this was an investment in the hundreds of millions of dollars to get Tata Sky launched. So that was a really cool project. And trust me, I focused quite a bit of my business school application on this. But it wasn't everything I did. I also had a another part of my job, 
And that was sometimes we would have to give presentations, and sometimes when I was the lowest person on the totem pole, part of my job involved staying until 2 a.m., printing out these presentations and putting them through a little machine that looks something like this <laughs> to try to collate it together uh, so that it looked nice. Do you think, given what I have told you right here in this video, do you think that I mentioned anything about this particular responsibility of mine anywhere in my application, much less in my resume? Uh, of course I didn't. Why would I dilute the story? I don't want them to associate me as being the person who puts together the reports. I don't want them to think of me that way. I want them to think of me as the woman working on this incredible project. Hopefully, you can now start to think of how this impacts your resume as well. What are the things that might currently be on your resume that either show you doing this very juniorish stuff what are some things that you could maybe focus on instead that are more leadership focused skills, these EQ skills, these interpersonal skills that you're going to need for career success in the future. If you focus on this stuff, your resume is already going to be much, much stronger than that of your competitors to business school, I promise.